Hi. <laughs> well, hello and welcome to this Victober reading vlog. I've been trying to film a video down here and it's not working because Bella is wanting cuddles. Bella is one of my cats and she is continually going in front of the camera. Um, it is Victober. I decided to just do one vlog because I had too many plans for October. But I do want to give some attention, of course, to the wonderful readathon that is Victober. In my TBR word video, I did make a TBR for Victober, so I will link that down below if you want to see it. I did have a mood read this month already that actually fits one of the prompts that I did not plan. So that is really great. I read Dracula by Bram Stoker, which I surprisingly enjoyed quite a lot. I did not expect to enjoy it as much as I did, but I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was great fun and a little bit spooky as well. But one of the prompts was to watch an adaptation. And in my TBR video, I said I wanted to watch Cranford, but I cannot get a hold of the series anywhere. I thought I would use Dracula and I watched Dracula Untold. This is a film that's a supposed prequel to Dracula, so it's like his origin story. You would think that it would be a villain origin story, but Dracula is the hero of this story, which he is like this big family man who really loves his wife and who becomes a vampire to save his son. Even though I did enjoy the film, I think it is definitely not Bram Stoker's Dracula because that's a very different character. One thing I do have to say about this film is that they did put some effort into using Bram Stoker's Dracula and the history he tells in the book. It is pretty true to that in the film, especially of Dracula fighting the Turks. But the people who play the Turks in this film, I can only hope Hollywood has learned because Dominic Kuber, he plays the emperor of the Turks. The actors are supposed to be native Turks and they speak Turkish as well. And I don't speak Turkish, but I can hear that it's really, really bad. So that I think took me out of the film a little bit. I feel like if you have characters who are supposed to be native of a certain language, then cast characters who actually speak the native tongue. Like for the believability of your film, even if you're making a fantasy. Other than that, I did have fun watching that film. So that is one prompt down. I've also read Filet by Charlotte Bronte for the Bronte Long, which I used for Katie's prompt for the Buildings Roman. So that means that I still have three books to read. I have short stories, poetry collection, and I wanted to read Daniel Deronda, which I don't think I'm going to finish in October, but I will take into November because I still really do want to read that one. I have joined some reading friends as well that Petra has hosted Victoria Reading Sprints, which has been great fun. Uh, thank you so much, Petra, for inviting me to join those sprints because I had a great time. So let's do some Victoria reading. Well, hi, good morning. I just went to the book cafe with my dad, which was such a fun time. And when I did sprints, Victoria sprints with Petra and Kate, they were talking about Anthony Trollope and I have never read anything by Anthony Trollope. So I asked them and the people in the chat, to recommend me a book where I should start with. So I went to the book cafe first to get these very cute postcards, which are all like beautiful pieces of art of classic literature, which I really, really wanted. But also I was looking for some Anthony Trollope. <laughs> gotten back and I will show you some b-roll of the beautiful postcards that I got but I can show you 
Can I show you my favorite? I don't know. The one from Tessa the Durbervilles is one they have in the store, which is why I asked them, like, are you going to sell these? And they said, we might. <laughs> and then they did, which is really lovely. They have a lot of Jane Austen ones, but I think my favorite of all of them is the Jane Eyre one. So yes, I did find some Anthony Trollope. I found The Warden. Someone in the chat said that this was a good place to start. This is about Reverend Harding and his youngest daughter, Eleanor. It tells with gentle humor and subtle satire of the moral dilemma he faces when accused of living on the funds that should be distributed. Sounds fun. I can't wait to start my first Anthony Trollope. And then I bought another Victorian novel. These are both secondhand. I'm going to be honest, this was a title buy. <laughs> I read the title and I was like, oh, I know the name of the author, but I do not know if it's a positive or a negative association. But just I, I like the title that I just bought it. And that is Thomas de Quincy's His Confession of an opium eater. I know that people have talked about this. I don't know if it was a recommendation or something that you definitely should not read. I'm hoping for some Victorian scandal and drama and romance. And I know that it's about a man who's addicted to opium. Like, big surprise, but look at this. And I really like the edition, so... I brought it with me. And then I found a book from 1905. It is not Victorian because it's a Russian novel, but it's the same time period. And that is The Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Orxy. A thrilling story of an aristocratic hero with a double life. This is about an English nobleman who saves um, aristocrats from being murdered by the guillotine during the French Revolution. It sounds so insane and adventurous. I do think this is a series. This one has been on my radar for a while, so would love to give that a go as well. And then and I got a belated wedding gift from the lovely Pauline over on Bookstagram. And she gave me a biography of George Eliot. Since reading Middlemarch, I am really in love with George Eliot. And that is this gorgeous edition. I really like this portrait of George Eliot. This is the one by Gordon Haig. If you've read this one or know of this one, I would love to hear your thoughts. Because I've never come across this one. I have not yet read much non-fiction about George Eliot. So having a biography is really, really Great. Now that I've shown you a lot of books that I'm definitely not going to read this October, let's talk about the books that I'm actually reading during October. <laughs> Madam. Madam, excuse me. I have some work to do. Finally finish some Victober reads and it's almost the end of the month already. Unfortunately, I did not enjoy the novella by Robert Louis Stevenson. 
I have read some things by him before and I always feel very lukewarm about his writing. This kind of reminded me of Carmilla, which is novella novel, I guess, which also has a secluded house, vampires, and no, it just did not grip me. It is a novella, a gothic tale about a house in Spain and this man goes to the house and he meets the family that lives there and he feels suspicious things about those people. So far with Robert Louis Stevenson, I have not experienced that he has captured me that he has set down the atmosphere that I find very intriguing. I'm just a bit bored and I gave this two stars. It's a shame but it is my goal to read all of these that I have in the collection. So at least I have read another one in this collection which I have not been doing a lot this year. I'm also reading Emily Bronte's poetry which is also in this collection and I'm loving that so much. It's so wonderful, so beautiful. I read about three poems at a time because it's very emotional and I cannot really handle reading the whole thing um, at once. So when I finish that, I will talk to you a little bit more about that. I can just say, also with my reread of Wuthering Heights this year, Emily Bronte is definitely one of my favorite authors. If I finish the Emily Bronte poetry, then I have only one prompt left, and that is the Illness and Disability prompt. And for that, I was planning to read Daniel Deronda, but my brain cells just cannot handle such a big book right now. If I would start it, I would feel a lot of pressure to finish it. It's not what I'm looking for right now, so I'm going to do the biggest cop out ever and grab the smallest George Eliot I have. Now I do not know if this fits the prompt but I do really want to read some George Eliot and this was my other option on my own TBR. I know that this is the friendship about an orphaned girl and an older man who has been wrongly accused of something. I think George Eliot often writes about disability in her novel so there's a chance this would fit the prompt but if not then at least I've read another George Eliot and I have saved Daniel Deronda, which I think is my most anticipated George Eliot that I still want to read. I have saved that for a time when I'm really ready for it. And I don't want to read it while not being in the right mood for it. So I think I'm going to start this one today and it's the 30th of October. So maybe if I'm in a big reading mood, I will finish it before October. But um, I will check you about this while I am reading it. <laughs> I am making a pumpkin cake because it is the day before Halloween. So then we have a pumpkin cake tomorrow, but I live in the Netherlands and they do not sell canned pumpkin here. So when I made a pumpkin curry yesterday, I just roasted a whole pumpkin and you put half of it in the fridge. So now I have some homemade pumpkin puree that I'm going to put with all the ingredients. I have some food restrictions, but there is a baker on Instagram that makes mostly gluten-free. Um, I think everything she makes is gluten-free. Some of it is also egg-free, which is like my fine spot, what I need. And she made this cake. I am going to use a different topping than she made, but I will leave a link to her Instagram down below. So if you have the same kind of food restrictions, her baking looks absolutely delicious. It is a big mess out here. So that is maybe why I, want, why I don't want to film what I'm doing. But like baking content is so cozy. So excuse the mess. I also just went grocery shopping. So it's all everywhere. But let's try to make a pumpkin cake. So I have some vegan butter that I need to put together. Sugar. I am a bit nervous about the um, temperature of the butter. So I'm adding the pumpkin that also has some milk in it. Oh my gosh, the pumpkin looks beautiful. So I think to replace the egg, I had to add a little bit of vinegar, which will activate the baking soda I have to add later. Baking without gluten is one thing, but baking without eggs is a whole other journey. So now onto my favorite part, the spices. We make these kind of pumpkin spice usually have all the spices just always ready to go. I was out of a lot of those spices, so I just bought a spice mix. It's not a pumpkin spice mix. It is speeklaaskruiden, which is something we use a lot in the Netherlands. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It smells so good. Oh, I'm filming on my phone and the recipe is on my phone. Um, but I think I will add like three teaspoons. Yeah, I need to add a little bit more. I don't care if it's very spicy.
Oh, it has a lot of flavor. I kind of like it. Boy, try it. Stop gaming and try it. Okay. Yeah. It is the next day and I had a really lovely time yesterday during reading experience with Mary. Um, and I started Silas Marner yesterday. I got quite a bit in. I read 77 pages, so I'm on chapter 9. I am enjoying this. The writing is beautiful, of course, because it's George Eliot and I love George Eliot's writing. I've been writing may even top. Bronte writing. I mean, not Wuthering Heights, because Wuthering Heights is Wuthering Heights, but other Bronte novels, I think. I really enjoy the way that George Eliot sets up characters, and Silas Marner is a character that he feels almost like Thomas Hardy-like in a way that his life is just being ruined by everyone around him. We start out with him being falsely accused of a crime and later in a novel he is robbed um, and he is just trying to live his best, a humble Christian life. And that's not really working out for him. I recognize some characters from Middlemarch as well. There's a character that's kind of like Fred in Middlemarch. He is not very good with money. And he is one of the reasons that Silas, his life, is not going well. I know that at some point he meets a little girl and they start a friendship. But Mary did warn me that that is only in the last half of the novel. We had a discussion as well about how much the bag gives away, uh, the, the synopsis on the bag gives away of the novel and how that can kind of ruin your reading experience. And I was really glad that she said that. That helped me kind of adjust my expectations for this book and just enjoy what I was reading. I love George Eliot. Every time I read something from George Eliot it is just confirmed. I'm happy I switched from Daniel Deronda to this because now I can fully appreciate this just thinner novel. And like half an hour ago, I finished the poetry by Emily Bronze, which, wow, it's just amazing. I have a bigger collection of this one, but I just feel so intimidated all the time. I will say I got way more out of this than the first time I read it during Fixover 2020. I saw some annotations that I made um, that were like, like 2020 Milena was a bit stupid at some point. Reading it now, I was so sure what it was about. Part of that, I think, is because I know so much more about the Bronte's life than I did two years ago. What I got out of it the first time is that it's about the seasons, about the metaphor of spring and winter and how that cycle of seasons is reflected in life as well. But the religious part is not something that I really noticed or really was able to appreciate. But now that I know so much more about Emily's upbringing and especially about her parents, their religion and beliefs, it's so important to know a little bit about that to fully understand Emily Bronte's poetry, at least for me it was very important. Because this time around I could really see Emily Bronte struggle with both religion, death and God and how that is all intertwined for her. So or how that was all connected to her and both the big admiration for those themes and the fear of it and when one becomes the other. So there's a lot about her not necessarily challenging God because I don't think she's doing that, but she's challenging her fear of the power that God has um, to her as of course a religious woman. If you look at Emily Bronte's life she had lost a lot of her close family members at an early age. That kind of plays within how she viewed her fear of death but also wanted to be close to the concept of death because it's a way of her to remember where she came from, from her mother. Um, there is a poem about Ireland as well where her father was from. I would like to study these poems because this is just me grabbing onto the small bits that I understand. <laughs> but I felt like she was diving into the ancestry of Ireland as well. And she's trying to connect with so much that I think she felt she lost, whether that was to death or it just not really existing anymore. Her father's family in Ireland, because I think her father never went back to Ireland. I don't think the Bronte sisters ever visited his family in Ireland, as far as I know. I haven't finished the biography yet. There is this still of Emily and Anne in the film To Walk Invisible, where Emily is reading one of her poems to Anne. She's not actively crying, but she starts to just shed a few tears. I felt that was so powerful and reaction to that. I hadn't really experienced that kind of emotion with reading Emily Bronte's poetry, but now I could really feel the emotional heaviness of the poems. I do want to read the bigger collection, but I'm not sure that the collection that I own is the best. I would love a collection that has a lot of notes, because I definitely need help when I'm reading poetry, so if you have a recommendation of 
a collection of Emily Bronte poetry that has a lot of like help notes when you're reading it. I would offer a recommendation for that. Also, yes, this is a five star. Every time I read it, it's a five star. I'm going to read it again. It's going to be a five star again, my prediction. So I have finished Silas Marner. Nora is taking a nap behind me. I'm sorry, you can't really see her. I ended up giving this four stars. This was really lovely. In the beginning, I was a little bit confused as to why we were introduced to so many different characters and why different chapters were set in different houses with different people. But throughout the resolution and the second half of the novel, it all started to make sense. The writing was gorgeous. Of course, George Eliot's writing is just gorgeous. The character of Silas is so well written and the relationship that he develops with the girl that is mentioned on on the back of this novel is beautiful. I enjoyed it so much. I think the core of this book is just a character not being very lucky in life but gaining love from another human being and that being worth everything even when something we have lost returns to us. It's a beautifully wrapped up story with some quite heartbreaking bits as well. I think did I say that it reminded me a little bit of Thomas Hardy? Because it does, it does remind me of a certain storyline in Far From Many Crowds. I would say this kind of fits a disability illness prompt because in the very beginning and at the very end of this novel it is mentioned that Silas has a form of epilepsy which in the beginning of the novel he has an epilepsy attack and people think it is like a sign of the devil which is like times. <laughs> Even though that has a function in his character development, I wouldn't say it is something that is part of the entire novel. I'm gonna put a question mark whether or not I got that prompt. If I would have to rank my Victober reads, Biggest Disappointment was the short story by Rob Lewis Stevenson. And all the others I quite liked. I think then on place number four I would put Dracula, number three Silas Marner, number two, Villette, and number one, The Poetry by Emily Bronze. Even though I did not read a lot, I did have a really good Victober. I did read three Victorian novels, even though they were not included in this vlog. I also read, of course, Dracula and Villette. Overall, I've had a good Victober. I was thinking of listening to Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell because I think not including that in my TBR since I bought it like three years ago. So I might listen to that and just take my time with it. If I do so, you will see it probably in next month's wrap up. Thank you so much for watching this Victober vlog. Let me know how your Victober went. I hope that you have found a new favorite Victorian novel for now. I hope that you have a lovely, lovely day or evening and I hope to see you in another video. Doei!